Today on Beerus TV, we're gonna filter this tank. Hi guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to another week of the Beer S160, where every week we do our best to help you guys, members of the reefing community, enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. We do that by following the setup and progression of this 160 gallon reef tank. Today we're going to talk mechanical filtration. Mechanical filtration is a process of using various filters to remove particulates from the water column. Generally, this just makes the tank look cleaner, but done right, it can also significantly reduce waste in the tank, resulting nutrients and ultimately your dependency on water water changes. We're going to explore the most popular methods with filter socks, pads, canister filters, and something new with the Thelene roller mat, which represents the biggest advancement in mechanical filtration to date. If you're tired of changing filter socks, this is the answer you've been looking for. Filter socks are the most popular by far. Concept here is pretty simple. Just place a felt sock under the overflow exit in your sump, and the filter sock will capture uneaten food, fish poop, algae, and all kinds of organics in various states of decomposition. Capturing it in the sock means you can remove it. Removing it means the tank looks clearer, more pristine, and the captured organics won't decompose into nutrients like phosphate and nitrate that feed algae growth. So while that's fairly easy to understand, but there are some elements that are poorly or at least only partially understood by a lot of newer reefers in terms of how effective this is at reducing nutrients. Fact is, if you leave the socks in the tank long enough, most of what the socks capture are just going to break down inside the sock and produce nutrients from there, and why some reefers have referred to filter socks as nitrate factories. I think it's important to understand the real impact of what's described here as well as solid maintenance practices which actually have quite the opposite effect. It's absolutely true if you leave the filter socks in there for weeks to months, most of the organics they capture will break down or decompose into nutrients like nitrate and phosphate. So if you only change them once every month or two, it's very likely the only purpose they're serving is removing floating particulates from the water column, which alone might be good enough reason for most reefers to use them. So what about the claim that they're actually producing nutrients or nitrate factories in the tank and instances like this where they're rarely changed out. Well, there's one thing we can absolutely rule out. The filter sock itself is not adding any organics or nutrients to the tank. It's only capturing organics that are already in the tank. So the question is, what would happen to these organics without the filter sock? Well, most of the larger elements, like uneaten foods, will likely settle out in the sump somewhere and decompose there instead of the sock. The elements which are already broken down fairly far will be removed with the protein skimmer, but many of these elements are small enough to make it through the sock anyways, and some of the organics that make their way back to the return pump will be returned to the tank. What makes it back to the tank may be consumed by fish, your cleanup crew, or microfauna like copepods and amphipods. I will say that in most common sump designs, it's much more likely for waste and foods to settle out in the sump than make their way to the return pump and back up to the tank. However, you should be aware that living organisms only utilize a small amount of the nitrogen and phosphate found in their food, and the rest is either excreted as ammonia through their gills or in nutrients in their waste. While livestock consuming organics like excess food and waste will have some impact on nutrient levels in the tank, it's very far from complete removal. In fact, livestock consuming organics and producing ammonia is one of the largest sources of nitrogen in the tank. End of story, if you use filter socks to capture waste and excess food and almost never change them, the likely net result is a tank will have somewhat higher nitrates and phosphates than not using them at all because of the reduced organics available to your skimmer to remove and a limited impact that livestock will have processing some organics. This is where the change-out schedule comes in. Nothing will reduce nutrients better than removing waste, uneaten foods, and organics permanently from the tank. How much you effectively remove is a net effect of how often you change them out, the flow rate through the sump, and the flow in the tank itself. The more flow and turbulence you have in the tank, the longer the organics will stay suspended and potentially make their way down to the sump. The higher the flow through the sump, the more total water the socks process. The more frequently you replace the socks, the more organics you'll permanently remove from the tank, the lower the nutrients will be, and your dependency on water changes will reduce correspondingly. So how often is enough? Well, every day would obviously be best, but that's not realistic in most cases. A really solid schedule would be twice a week, so every three or four days. Most people, however, find themselves either doing it once a week or every other week with decreasing effectiveness. Obviously, the longer you wait, the less effective it will be at reducing nutrients. I think a good compromise is once a week when you do your other weekly maintenance, like cleaning the glass. It only takes a minute or two to swap them out. They're pretty inexpensive, so you can replace them with new socks or you can wash them. The most common method is to wash them in your washing machine without any soaps or detergents. Some reefers will use bleach, but I don't find that to be necessary in my experience. One piece of advice is keep this on the down low because most of our spouses will not be happy we're putting socks filled with fish poop and decaying food in their wash machine. 
Filter socks come in a few options, starting with a felt type, which is by far the most popular and what captures the most waste. They're also available in a mesh type, which is more like a fine net and will capture the largest elements like chunks of food, but let the smaller particles through for the skimmer or other filtration to catch. My experience is the mesh doesn't capture a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. A good alternative if your sump design uses filter socks and you ultimately don't want to use felt. They also come in four and seven inch diameters as well as a drawstring or plastic ring. By far, most sump designs use a four inch diameter with plastic rings. For smaller custom sumps, you can also pick up shorter length socks as well. Very similar to filter socks, there are also various filter pads and meshes available on the market like the Aqua Mesh Progressive Filter Pads or Pre-Filter Pads and Felt from Lifeguard. For the most part, I'd say this is most commonly used in custom installs and older equipment. Related to all this is canister filters. Today's canister filters attempt to be an all-in-one solution for particulates, capturing nutrients, containing waste, biological and filtration medias like GFO and carbon. That said, while some fish-only systems still use canister filters, they've largely become irrelevant in the reef tank because there's better and easier ways to maintain each one of these things. For instance, no one wants to remove the entire canister every few days to replace a felt pad, and it's a lot easier to swap carbon cartridges in today's more popular reactors than it is to disassemble your canister. There really just isn't an instance where I'd personally use a canister filter these days. That brings us to what I think might be one of the biggest changes and advancements in reefing filtration in recent history, the Thielen roller mat. The roller mat takes a concept behind filter pads and socks and brings them into the future and virtually removes all the downsides associated with this concept by automating the removal of the waste so you don't have to be concerned about replacing the socks. Rather than use a sock that needs to be replaced, the roller mat uses a roll of filter paper wrapped around a wheel. The water enters the main chamber and has to pass through the filter paper in the wheel to escape out of the side of the container. This is where the cool part comes in, as the paper clogs with fish waste, organics, and uneaten food that gets trapped on the outside of the paper, it essentially clogs it, which causes the water level to rise and triggers a float switch, which turns the paper wheel to collect the waste and expose fresh paper to allow the water level to drop inside the roller mat. We've been testing the roller mat for months in one of our equipment testing stations before we elected to bring it in, and I have to say it lives up to its claims. You can see how dirty the exit side of the roll is compared to the progressively clean side where the new paper enters. All the organic gunk is going to be permanently removed from the tank before it has a chance to break down. That result is basically a self-regulating device that collects and removes the organics from the tank. The only other common piece of equipment that's capable of doing this is a protein skimmer. These two filters now in fact work in unison. The roller mat removing the larger components which haven't broken down yet, and the skimmer removing the smaller dissolved organic compounds which have partially broken down. There are two methods of implementing the roller mat. Both are designed to be done inside the sump. First one is to have your main overflow feed directly into it, which is ideal if that type of plumbing is possible in your system, and the flow rate is within the two to 600 range that roller mat is designed for. By feeding it from the overflow, you're going to capture most of everything that goes down the overflow. It's possible some foods or other debris will settle out in the bottom of the roller mat rather than get sucked into the paper, so I designed it in a way you can remove it fairly easy for cleaning and paper roll replacement. Second is to simply set it in the sump and feed it with a manifold or a separate pump. This won't be as efficient or process as much tank water every day, but it's a great alternative if feeding off your overflow just isn't an option. Last few things I'd like to mention about the roller mat is there is an emergency overflow pipe in case the float switch ever gets clogged or the motor fails somehow, so make sure to position it properly so your tank is safe. How long each roll will last depends a lot on your system size, livestock choices, and what you feed, but we've seen the paper last a couple months in most systems with only a full revolution or two a day, and despite everyone's expectations, there just isn't much of an odor associated with the spent roll being collected. Okay, so what are we going to implement for the BRS-160? Well, our sump had a spot for four filter socks we were using previously, but there's no way we could resist using the Thielene roller mat. There was a lot of pressure to just throw a pump on it and put it in the sump because that's the easiest solution. But end of the day, even though it was a challenge, it required us to cut apart some plumbing, we did it properly by feeding it with our primary overflow. We just turned it on hours ago, and you can see how much gunk it's already collecting. We fed the fish, and you can see small pieces of shrimp that go down the overflow sticking to the paper as well. All of this is getting wrapped up on the other side of the roll, pulled out of the tank permanently, and removed before it adds any nutrients to the tank. Honestly, I couldn't be more impressed with how the roller mat works. 
All that said, be prepared for one major disappointment because this is a European product we sourced and imported for BRS customers. It has metric fittings, which is a real pain in the butt and complicates installation. Most of you are going to have to utilize conversion fittings like these from Coralview, which change the bulkheads from metric to inch size fittings. We're obviously trying to get them to produce a version for the U.S. market, but it's likely going to be a while before we see that produced and available for sale. We happen to have some metric fittings and bulkheads we scavenged from the graveyard of samples and old products we have around here, so we're able to plumb the return and emergency return with 40 and 20 millimeter piping. For the entrance to the sump, we wanted a cleaner install than conversion fitting, so we drilled a larger hole and made room for a one and a half inch bulkhead. You will notice we installed a ball valve and a gate valve on the input. The ball valve serves two purposes, a shutoff as well as a union point so you can remove the roller mat for maintenance and cleaning. The gate valve is for fine tuning the flow or siphon of the reef savvy ghost overflow. It's possible we could use the ball valve for that too, but I like the ability to fine tune it and leave it in place even when we disconnect the roller mat. Assembled, it seems to be working just as planned with virtually 100% of the water from our overflows entering the bottom here, all of the water passing through the filter paper, exiting out the center of the drum into the old filter sock area of the Synergy sump. There's also an emergency overflow pipe we plumbed in as well. Notice we plumbed it above the water line. We did this so it makes a splashing noise if it's ever activated. The pipe does seem kind of small, but in the event of a motor failure or paper getting clogged and stuck, water will also rise and enter the top of the wheel, so I feel the combined approach protects the tank adequately. So that's it, we now have a system that captures and removes all kinds of waste and uneaten food from the tank. Honestly, I like this thing so much, I'd be absolutely shocked if we didn't see a whole slew of new similar entries in the market in the upcoming years. This is a solution to a long-standing problem in reef aquariums, and manufacturers generally know solutions like this are huge opportunities. One last tip, this thing is almost a perfect fit for a 40 gallon breeder, which is a pretty common sump size. So for those of you that didn't think you had space, you might be surprised. Hope everyone learned something new about mechanical filtration today and we answered some of your questions. If that's the case, shoot us a quick thumbs up or comment below. Next week is Christmas, so we're taking a much needed week off, but we'll see you the following week with week 26 of the BRS 160 Biological Filtration.